Hey guys, and welcome back to Tome Time Tea. This is your host, C.T. Russell, here with her twin. Hi, I'm her twin. That's not actually my name, but, you know. <laughs> just gonna roll with it for now, twin. Okay. Alrighty. So, this is where we left off, I hope. It's been a while, I can't remember. Yeah, kind of didn't record all of these in one sitting. Not now sure. you'll be able to tell because I'm sick and I'll be coughing. <laughs> but we're powering through it. Okay. Maybe if you're a bit more often, like that a bit more often, maybe. Sigh. There's no use wishing for something that's never going to happen. No matter how nice it is to think about, Got to forget Q's hot, hot body. Although it's nice to distract myself with those memories while the real Q uh, is ranting at me. And anyways, you outsiders don't have any horns. I thought they just might be really small under your hair, but no. No horns at all. Do you have any idea how ridiculous you look? Well, I mean, she is horny. Does that count? Totally. I almost feel sorry for you. How do you strike fear in the very souls of your enemies? <laughs> Probably with that big-ass sword she carries around. <laughs> and look at that. It's huge. Oh, I never noticed how it goes. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is big. Are you going to be like this the whole way? Why? Are you so intimidated by my greatness? What? No! Ugh. Why are you so... so full of yourself? Can't believe I thought I saw something deeper in you, even for like a tiny second. At least now I know for sure that looks aren't everything. No, they're not. Wait, what? You saw something in me? Wow, I really don't want to get into this right now. Or... Before I could say anything, the wind starts to pick up and howls. The music has changed. The snow thickens into heavy sheets. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to go alone. We should have taken something. I took the sword. I can hardly see anything in front of me. There's no time to argue. I have to deal with this first. Thank goodness. You're minus. Can you hear me? I know we've only been walking again for a little while, but we need to stop and find shelter for the night. Ha <laughs> ha! Are you so easily defeated by a little wind and cold? It's still light out, and we just took a break. But if you're tired again already, I'd be happy to carry you the rest of the way. For goodness sake, can you stop? If we keep going into this weather, we'll both get lost or catch our death of cold. Trust me, I've crossed mountains before. The smartest thing to do is... I've crossed mountains too. Do you really think you know better than me? Don't make me laugh. Honestly, I've had just about enough of this guy. I've had just about enough of this guy. It takes a lot to push me over the edge, but I want to get this over with and get out of the stinging cold. Prince Kia, shut up. Yes. Finally. It's like you can't even open your stupid mouth without saying something mean to me. Can't. And for what? All I'm doing is trying to help you. You're acting like a bratty child and I'm sick of it. Oh, finally. Look, you hired me to be your guide across the mountains. Now as your servant, you can push around. 
but you still won't take any of my advice or listen to a word I say. Why did you even hire a guide at all if you think you're so superior? You may not think so, but I actually know what I'm doing. Probably more than you. Ah, oh, you go girl, finally. It took way too long to get to this point. <laughs> but if you're not going to listen to me, I should just leave you to die alone on this mountain for real this time. There's a thick veil of smoke around Kia, blurring his features. He doesn't answer me at all at first, but comes closer to me, moving with strong, purposeful strides. Okay. I almost forgot how large he is. He towers over me easily. Now that he's closer, I see his face more clearly. He looks angrier than I've see ever seen him. The sight of it shocks me to silence. If only I weren't trembling with anger myself. I wonder if I'd gone too far. No, dude. You went just far enough. He finally speaks. His voice has a hard edge to it. Vicious growl that seems to shake the earth even through the layers of snow. How dare you! How dare you! You speak to me as you would a child. I am not a child. Kind of are. Yeah, he is. You truly believe that I need you? You are a lowly outsider, weak and pathetic like an infant. What possible use could I have for you? Why did... Why? If I knew, if I knew what I was, if you knew what I was, you'd, you'd beg to serve me. I am the great Kyoya, who once tore the throat of the wolf drake with my bare hands. I was only a baby. It was my first kill. The one that marked me for greatness for life. I laugh to think what your first kill must have been. If you've ever had, even had one. How does killing something make you manly? I, I don't know. It was probably the time a mouse, mouse got into the kitchen when our father was making breakfast. And I hit it with a frying pan. Frying pans, man. Ah. <laughs> but now it doesn't seem like that great of a story. <laughs> Kia is shouting now. He's lost all sense of what's around him. His fangs and claws bared in fury. I face his rage head on without flinching. Finally. Seeing him like this, his wild mane whipped in the wind. Oh, <laughs> Muscles God, rippling. No. Those sharp oh. teeth are huge and frightening. <laughs> I've been thinking of Kuya as a big blowhard, but it occurs to me for the first time these stories might actually be true. I don't... Yeah. I still don't think they're true. <laughs> oh, I thought she was going to go on about how hot he is, so... I guess it's a step up from that, but... Okay. He really does look like a barbarian prince one who could rip the throat of a drake of a wolf drake or a level of forest with his bare hands so so are you so pitiful that you have nothing to say in response well that's to be expected isn't it a pathetic outsider with nothing to do or say why did you even bring me along if you hate me so much? Hate you? I... but... I don't... In the next instant, our argument comes to an end. We both realize there's a bigger problem in front of us. 
Oh snap! Wow. Yeah, that seems like a bigger problem. Look at the size of that thing. Yeah. A great and terrifying beast emerges from the swirling snow. A tremendous spore. tremendous spore covered with tense black hair as sharp and as thick as nails with a set of cruel tusks as long as my arm. A mountain needle razorback. I remember reading about them in one of my old books. My blood turns cold at the sight of it. These beasts don't normally attack humans unprovoked, but loud sounds can trigger them into a rampage. Oh, that sucks. This one must have heard Kuya and I when we were shouting at each other. The Razorback saunters towards us, its tusk lowered in attack position. I grab Kuya's arm and speak in a low whisper. Your mightiness! I've read about these things. And they're very dangerous. Even if we both try to fight, we might not make it out alive. If we move back slowly, we can escape and find shelter without provoking it to charge. Rosemary, do not insult me. I am a hunter prince. I can ha handle this f foul beast myself. Kyo's voice shakes violently with fear. Or with cold? I can't tell. It's fear, honey. Yeah. Well, I mean, it might be cold because he refuses to wear a damn shirt. Yeah. All I know is we're bo we'd both be idiots for fighting this thing. And the longer we go without running, the less chance we have of escaping. I remember reading something about having one very odd, surprising weakness. But it was just a footnote in the book. I can't for the life of me think of it now. Please, if you've ever listened to me, listen to me now. This is... This isn't about how strong you are. That thing has a hide like steel and tusks that can rip you in a second. Rip th through you in a second. Even the strongest person in the world can't fight it. Let me handle this. I know I can do it, but please trust me. It's not crazy to think Kia might be a match for that thing, but I can't shake this feeling, the feeling that he's in over his head. Don't know what to do, but it's too late anyways. The Razorback lunges forward to charge at us. I'll have to make a decision now or we'll both be dead. Let Kyoya fight, man. I don't give a crap. If he dies, we have to reset again. We're not picking him. Okay. If Kyoya thinks he doesn't need me, then so be it. Yep. I still don't intend to fight that thing, though. I back off towards the trees, running as fast as I can. Are you just leaving me here? Aren't you supposed to protect and guide me? I hoped you'd follow me. You should be running too. <laughs> uh, I think he might be dead. <laughs> oh sh- oh. My heart sinks. Did I make the right call? Oh. Kia did tell me he could handle it, but in my shock- And to my shock, he seems to be doing okay. He has no weapons except for his claws, but he's slashing ferociously at the Razorback's face, stopping it dead in his tracks. 
His roars sound sounds yeah. wild and feral. Nailed it. <laughs> the sound of it makes my hair stand on the back of my neck. Totally did that, guys. I did that. He really is a great hunter, isn't he? But, like I said, it doesn't matter how strong you are, that Razorback's bad news. Uh-oh, he he, he's flying backwards into the snow, guys. Come on, is he, is he dead? It, oh, the Razorback's gonna kill him. Oh, I didn't realize he could actually die. Oh, no, never mind. Damn it, Rosemary. What are you going for? You can go for another, like, two minutes. Okay. I scream as loud as I can. The Razorback can't stand loud noises. Sure enough, the beast forgets Kia and comes charging at me instead. Have to think fast. Need to put some distance between us, but the Razorback can move fast, even in heavy snow. Those tusks might be on me soon. To the left of me is a huge tree as thick around as the Razorback is large. I strike out with, with my sword and chop it down in one clean stretch. Damn, that's pretty powerful. Yeah! Just as planned! The tree comes thundering down. Huge crass startles the Razorback into stopping for a moment. Kia is on the other side of the tree than the Razorback and I. Now I can be sure the Razorback will only charge at me. R Rosemary? What are you doing? You can't take on that thing by yourself. Wasn't that what you were trying to do? Yeah, a little sexist, dude. Don't worry, I'm not as dumb <laughs> as you! Yes! <laughs> Nailed it. The Razorback has gone over its shock and, the, and is raging into charging again. All the shouting and crashes and loud noise have whipped it into a frenzy. I really wish I could remember its secret weakness it has, but I can't. Oh no! Will she remember the weakness? I guess we'll have to find out next time on Tome Time Tea. <laughs> no, that was, that was lame. I'm never doing that again. I'm sorry. We're getting all DVZ up in here. I, what can I say? <laughs> Super's ending and, or has it ended? I don't know. I feel like I should probably watch Super. I think I'd enjoy it. I, th I think I'd be over by the time we post these. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Anyways, see you guys next time. Bye. All right, see you later, guys.